Today's prayer is a poem. It is written by Naoshi Koryama. And the title of it is A Loaf of Poetry. You mix the dough of experience with yeast of inspiration and knead it well with love and pound it with all your might and then leave it until it puffs out big with its own inner force and then knead it again and shape it into a round form and bake it in the oven of your heart. Our reading this morning will be the readings of three of our poets, Lorraine Kujawa, Ellen Anthony, and, and Jane Bunker. I'm looking out there, where are Jane? And Jane Bunker. And when we asked for poems that were uh, inspirational or something to tell about our spiritual journeys, uh, really all five poets, but particularly the next four, wrote poems that are really along the lifeline. You'll hear a poem about childhood memory, a poem about family funny doings, a poem about aging, and then toward the end of the service, Bruce de Saint Croix will express his poem uh, that's a very a special poem about the end of life. So I welcome our poets up to the pulpit, and we'll hear Lorraine Kujawa first. The importance of poetry in our spiritual growth, otherwise known as catbird. When I was 10, living in Brooklyn, third floor brownstone on Hawthorne Street, much of my time was spent reading in a brown velvet chair, like cuddling in the folds of a great bear. My back against one large arm, knees braced against the other arm, there I read poetry, understanding less of the four-syllabled words than the feeling of the rhythm, matching the dancing of sound with pictures played in my head, a small dance for a small person. Now when I allow myself the pleasure of writing a line or two, I hunch over my books and papers, looking out my window, listening to the call of the catbird, announcing the arrival of bright purple berries born on what I now consider my trees. The poets before me have whispered the music of moments that touch their souls, one note at a time, given to make rich the lives we will never fully know, but catch like berries on a tree to nourish as we call our song to the world. Peanuts. At night, when I need a break from reality, I take out my set of nuts. These three or four peanut shells I call my next of kin. We talk. Precious, I say, how was thy day? And Precious, <clears throat> the one with the pock marks, puts down her knitting needles and replies, it spent itself out graciously, canned 60 quarts of gingered pears, put up some hunter's stew for the home, and sorted twiggy wool for to spin. How was thy day, dear sister? And it goes around the circle like that. Logs hissing in the fireplace, Rockers creaking and moaning, clickety-clack of whalebone needles. 
I feel safe in that old-fashioned way, cherished by nuts, and eventually drowsy. I tuck my half-shell fingers under the covers and drift off. Everyone should have a secret family. You? Aging. The I I've used since I was two to refer to me as opposed to you has felt kind of ageless, maybe 24 or 25, but not much more. But part of what I thought was me, the outside part, the part you see, suggests something else upon inspection that's clearly revealed in a mirror's reflection. Who is that one with face so lined? She of 24 is hard to find. And who is that one that's hard of hearing? Who is three quarters of a century nearing? What is the mirror now reflecting? A much older person is what I'm detecting. There seems a disconnect to me between how I feel and what I see. Sometimes that disconnect is scary, for death seems closer, and I'm wary. My mind engages in rejection of thoughts arising from the mirror's reflection. But who is the inside I, I feel, whose agelessness seems really real? The one that guides and lights my way and fills my heart with love each day. Who is the one that feels the same? The one I've always known as Jane. The one surprised by aging signs, like those clearly reflected wrinkle lines. Some say the eyes may be a portal to a deeper truth that is immortal. The one surprised by, oops, wait a second, I, I lost my place. Um, there we go. I'll start that verse again. Some say the eyes may be a portal to a deeper truth that is immortal. Others say, don't dwell on what is broken. Such wise words they all have spoken. Leonard Cohen honored the cracks we see. They let in the light that sets us free. An impermanence is the nature of things, for the everlasting is why the bell rings. So I'll focus on that ageless I, the one who doesn't need to try to interfere with the natural order, trying to stop deterioration at the border. And I'll try to look past all appearance, giving superficial thoughts a clearance, knowing myself as whole and aware, and freeing myself of aging cares. We have heard these wonderful poems about growing up. And hopefully we see how this written word, this spoken word, can help us grow up. The sermon this morning is about listening. It's about the stories that are inside you now. It's about being present to them. Some of you have words that you either chose or were given as you came into the sanctuary this morning. I hope you sort of looked at that word and wondered, hmm, rainbow, dream, rosy, maple. Those are the ones I kind of remember. I wrote them out for you. Well, somewhere in there, there's a poem. And we are going to make that poem ourselves this morning as the sermon. Yes, indeed we are. I've been up all night worried about this very moment. <laughs> okay, so 
some of us are going to wander through and uh, take a word from you. If you if you don't think your word speaks to you, you don't have. We don't need all the words. It, this poem doesn't have to be a book. But if it's a, a word that speaks to you, uh, give it to someone, and and that word will be brought forward. And I'm going to try and make a poem out of it with your help. All right. So Lorraine will go through and help, and Kate. And maybe Jane, wander through and pick up those words. This is the part of the sermon where we bask in the glow of the poem. Together now, certain deep as home, we dream, rosy as hope. Wow. Yeah, come look. The idea is that just as ordinary as bread and as simple and as life-filled as making bread with living yeast, the words we speak in common conversation Think about that. The words we pray at sacred times, the words we keep silent in our hearts, are all really like poems. Think on that. You are a living, walking, breathing poem. And when you say it aloud, or write it down privately, you're not just a poem, you are a poet. So welcome to your publication. There it is, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful poem. Shakespeare once said that, I'm super paraphrasing this, uh, that the words we write live on after us. So anyone who's been written about or anyone who writes, never really dies. Those words live on and on and on, just as the sound we make rolls out into the universe, into the galaxies, and never, never, never is silent. The sound I'm making right now will exist till the end of the universe, because it will never die. And that's true about our poems, because we say them aloud. It's quite amazing. So, would you like to read together your poem? Together, now, certainly as well. See, as well. Beautiful. I invite Bruce de Saint Croix to come up now, and his poem will emphasize what Shakespeare was saying that our words, even these words, will live on forever. <coughs> Still with you. Don't wonder where I've gone. Time and space are just illusions. I'm where I've always been. Still with you. Still with you, like the air you breathe. Like the thoughts you think. I've never left you in solitary. The sun unseen behind the clouds the rain that quickly follows sun, the wet of water and dry of warmth, like another skin still soft and sweet. Don't search 
Don't fret or fuss. There is nowhere that I exist, but in the ups and downs you live. I'm where I've always been, still, so still, with you. We have enriched our spiritual experience together this morning by joining in community to worship, to share our joys and concerns. Thanks to all of you for contributing in so many ways to our time together today.